Bill Horsecutter here with a new episode of the Radical Geek. This time I went to the Rochester Maker Fair in Rochester, New York. And the Maker Fair is basically, there's been a growth of making, crafting, and DIY over the past decade that has caused an explosion of hobbyists fueling their passion to create. Here they come together and show off their creations and exchange ideas. So I'm going to talk to some of these creative people, some of these makers, and, and you know, do my usual spiel, why they do what they do, and have some fun. Hope you enjoy. I have Dan Schneiderman of the Western Maker Company, one of the co-chairs of the Western Maker Fair. And can you tell me how this thing got started? So, uh, one of my other co-chairs, Antonio Scordello, attended the Buffalo Mini Maker Fair this past March with his kids. And after that, he went up to NiceGate, which he's a member of, the New York State Association of Computer and Technology Education, and said it would be great to have this included. And one thing led to another, and the fair kind of slowly came together. And how much, uh, output, I mean, how much uh, outcry from the public did you have for support for this? Once we started to tell people that we were working on the Mini Maker Fair, a lot of people said that they were excited. Okay, and uh, how did you um, how did you go through the process of deciding who you'd like to show up? Attending Rochester events, looking through listings, going through the uh, clothesline art festival, word of mouth. Basically, we found so much, so many people who just worked on so many things in Rochester that. We didn't have to really ask too much. Okay, and uh, out of all the exhibitors here, which one do you find is most interesting? Uh, I, I, every time I, someone asks me that question, I can never tell what, I never know what to say because there's a bunch of them. It's like, I love the Legos, I love the robotics, I love the art that's being done live here that anyone can contribute to. Okay. I, I don't have a favorite here, it's just too difficult, it's too many. Okay. And um, so, uh, what make you doing making of your own? Yes, I've made robots in the past. Uh, I grew up in a, with a family with a couple electrical engineers nearby. So I've worked on different electronic things, things with LEDs. Okay. But I also do a little art, just drawing. I've done experimental baking, which I hope to get more of that here next year. Okay. Alright, and uh, what would you like to see in the future? as many makers as we could possibly fit here. There, there are some artists out there that we wish we could have had time for. I would have loved to have food items, liquids, lots of things. How's it going? And uh, tell me how the group got started. We had a handful of adults who happen to love Lego. Um, a lot of us have little kids, and we wanted to get more stuff in the community, ways to connect kids, ways to connect adults together, make sure we had them to do, and make large displays. Because um, we love playing with Lego. So we got to up. Yeah. Well, tell me what the display you got on here. So we've built our Lego user group airport. We have some custom models in here from users. We've got some Lego official models, airport terminals, cargo terminals, warehousings, fuel trucks. Um, keep it interesting. So if members can come and contribute. Uh, members from the public who want to build stuff can bring their stuff, drop it off. Have your plane fly in if you want. I was five. <laughs> um, you have some members who started as an adult. Really, it's about being creative, picking up the blocks, uh, imagining how the blocks fit into reality, um, or fantasy world. If you like castles or space, uh, it's really easy to work. We happen to be working with more of a classic town theme here. How long did it take you to make all this stuff? It's been about three months of planning into it. Probably 100, 200 hours worth of building and collecting and whatnot. Oh, yeah. It's a mix of. I see a lot of great things over here. What's the piece in there is yours? Yes. I built the warehouse 
the airport terminal control tower. Um, a lot of us contributed to building the airplanes. Um, one of our members sought to build a crash plane site with rescue crews, uh, a moving radar dish. Tom has got uh, a wonderful little airport air show going on and some classic space shuttles. Some gigantic castles. Um, we're working on some Lego robotics. We're working on putting together a we call it great ball machine. And it uh, uses robotics and techniques. And it takes little tiny basketballs and soccer balls and it shuffles them through contraptions, whether they're gears or Ferris wheels or shooters or ramps. And it basically passes from module, 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 module. Exactly. Um, we're hoping to show it off at the Museum of Science. We started contacting them and figure out if we can display there for them. Um, if you go on Facebook, you can search for Rochester Lego User Group, or you can go to rochlove.org on the website. Crisis for the geek kind. Top geek officials admit they underestimated the hipster's defense capability. Join the geek revolution and save the galaxy. Geeks from all over the globe are joining up to fight for the future. They're doing their part. Are you? Want to know more? Join Weeby Geeks and the Geek Revolution and save the world. Service guarantees citizenship. Listen to Weeby Geeks podcast on iTunes and Stitcher or online at WeebyGeeks.net. Weeby Geeks, your voice for the Geek Revolution. Want to know more? Well, about um, six months ago, we started an Indiegogo crowdsourcing campaign uh, to the people of Ithaca saying, wouldn't it be great to have a bus full of exhibits, um, physics exhibits that show physics phenomena, um, but the exhibits are made with everyday regular uh, appliances that people weren't using for their intended purpose anymore. Okay, and can you explain uh, some of the things you have in the Yeah, so for instance, we have a microwave with neon bulbs in it, and the neon bulbs uh, ignite, it uh, ionizes the gas from the uh, microwaves that are inside the microwave. Um, also, we have a hair blow dryer that's been turned upward uh, with a, a balloon that hovers um, as if, you know, defying gravity it hovers above the uh, the um, hair blow dryer, and um, we have a television a television whose horizontal yoke has been interrupted so that when you play a keyboard, it makes the waves that your keyboard makes. So you can see the waves that you hear. Yeah, the physics factory started out in Tucson, Arizona about 10 years ago. Um, largely, uh, it, it came to fruition because it too had a physics bus. Um, at, at this point now, the physics factory is on its fourth bus. This is its fourth bus. Um, it still exists out in Tucson, and now it exists on the east coast out of Ithaca. Okay. How much did it cost? What was the cost to do this? Just got a curiosity. How much money did you raise? Um, we we actually raised as part of the Indiegogo campaign six thousand. A wealthy donor uh, gave another six thousand, so we had about twelve or thirteen thousand. And then um, and then we are also um, anyway the the cost of this whole thing up to this point has been about uh, four thousand. Dollars yeah, of everything. The bus um, came to us um, uh, because uh, a mom of a student of Cornell who had graduated, um, he had a bus as a party bus, and um, and when his mom saw our campaign, she suggested to him that since he was moving to the West Coast uh, to get a job after college, that uh, what was he going to do with his party bus? And what a great cause to give it to a science education outreach like ourselves. In the future, um, I would love to have a Tesla coil. I would also 
also like to have a Wimshurst generator uh, to make some sparks. And, um, yeah, yeah, static electricity generator. Um, yeah, things like that. All right, thank you. All right, I have the first robotics team, uh, 1511 from Penfield High School, called the Rolling Thunder. I've got James Edwards, Katie. Medinsky. Medinsky, thank you. And uh, Jeff Hastings. Uh, can you tell me how you got started with the group? Uh, well, my brother was on the team for four years. My dad worked for the main sponsor, so I just kind of got dragged into it because it just kind of became family to me. All right, and can you tell me about your robot? Um, last year's robot, its name is Thunder Tusk. The goal of the game was to throw a large 24 inch diameter ball into a goal six feet in the air or on the ground or over a truss that was six feet over the middle of the field. And you also had to work with other teams, with the other robots in your team to try and get more balls. The way okay. that the game was set up is that it was based on cooperation. So if you pass the ball from one robot to another on the end scored it, you get your Okay, so, and can you tell me what what the whole first robotics is about? Okay. Um, first robotics is an organization. It's worldwide, and first is actually an acronym. It stands for for in, for recognition of science and technology. All right. And um, what do you contribute to the team? Well, I'm the lead of our marketing sub team, so I get to write press releases and work on promoting our team. It's really cool. I'm also marketing, so I help. Her. I'm on mechanical, so I help design it in the computer software, but not the software, but I designed it in the computer and then I built it in the shop that we have. All right, can you explain what, uh, can you explain the uh, process of actually building the robot? Well, the first couple days of build season is usually us just strategizing about what we want the robot to do based on the game. And we have the six weeks to build the robot. Yeah, we have six weeks to build the robot. And well, then after that we start building it and we have to make sure that all the different pieces fit together because if they don't then it's not going to work very well. So usually most of the time is made up of building the robot and then at the very end we give it to the electrical team and then they add all the wires. Alright, and uh, how do you go about, um, actually when you build it, what, I mean, how do you look for, what kind of parts do you have that make up the robot? Um, different wires. Okay. A lot of, most of our robot is made out of parts which are made out of aluminum because it's light and easy to use. And a lot of our parts, if we need anything sheet metal, we'll send it out to our main sponsor, Harris, and they'll make it for us because we don't have machines for that in our shop. And okay. our sponsors also donate parts and do things like welding services for us. Okay. Yeah. All right. So and uh, when, so the season should be is the season already began, correct? Nope, not yet. Not we yet. find out what this year's game is on January first. Yeah. In January. January. And okay. Then we have the six weeks. Okay. And all right. So how can I see one of these events? Well, there's it, actually going to be one at RIT and it's open to the public, so you can free. look on the US first.org website to see when that is and then you can just go and watch it. All right, okay, thank you. I have Chris Tompkins Tate of Take It Apart We're the founders and can tell me how you got started. Hi, we're TakeItApart.com uh, and we're interested in STEM education through the deconstruction of everyday items. Uh, and so as a kid I love to take things apart to learn how they worked and to find components and see what they did and how they function. Uh, maybe learn a little bit more about the engineering processes that went into the things. Uh, and since then we made a website to share that sort of information with the world. Uh, so we have photo and video based assembly guides and anyone can see or share that information on the website. But lately we've been attending maker fairs on both coasts, New York, Orlando, San Francisco, Rochester, Buffalo, uh, and bringing electronic waste to the fairs so that anyone can turn screws and peek behind the curtain of the things that we use every day. So we don't have meetings, um, but I invite you to check out the guides on the website, and if you like to turn screwdrivers, you could even make your own and share that knowledge with the world. Sure, so at the Maker Fair in Rochester today, we have some electronic waste that was provided by Sun King Electronics in Brockport, New York. And 
fair goers have the opportunity to pick up a screwdriver and see what's inside the old computers and home video equipment and scientific devices that uh, we brought to the fair today. And so they can learn about energy storage and some of the mechanical elements, the stepper motors and uh, different drive mechanisms behind things like VCRs. Um, and we can uh, get people comfortable exploring physical things. Thank you.